In the world of geology, there are a surprisingly high number of myths which still persist among the general population despite the fact that they are not true. These include claims such as that the Earth's mantle is completely liquid, or even that uranium is the highest numbered element which you can find in the Earth's crust. This video will disprove five of these myths, starting with the one that I believe is the most common. Namely, that platinum is much rarer than gold. You might think this is the case because even with membership cards, a platinum rewards card is generally considered better than a gold rewards card. Yet, while both elements are indeed very rare, each comprising one of the ten rarest stable elements in the Earth's crust, platinum in terms of the total mass of this element in our planet's crust is actually more common than gold. While estimates vary, gold is thought to occur at an average concentration of approximately 2.9 parts per billion in the Earth's crust, making it about 21,400 times rarer than copper. Yet, for comparison, platinum occurs in the crust at an average concentration of approximately 3.5 parts per billion, meaning it is 20.7% more common than gold. However, platinum is actually a bit rarer than gold in terms of the amount of potentially mineable ore which could be extracted for a profit. As, much like many so-called rare earth elements, platinum has a habit of only rarely clumping together in greatly heightened abundances, generally remaining fairly disseminated at average concentrations throughout various rock units. This is why while only 7 million troy ounces of platinum are mined each year, around 100 million troy ounces of gold are mined in the same time period. A second common myth I hear is that if you were to take a piece of coal and send it deep in the planet where it would experience extreme heat and pressure, that it would turn into a diamond. However, this is simply not true. It is true that under intense heat and pressure, certain forms of near-pure carbon will change from one form into a diamond, and that coal is a rock-type rich in carbon. Yet, coal is also made up of other elements, only being between 60% and 95% by weight carbon. Because of these numerous impurities, it is impossible for coal to turn into diamond, which is about 99.95% .95 by weight carbon. I believe that this myth persists because many people incorrectly think of coal in the place of graphite, where graphite, which is a form of carbon, can, under intense heat and pressure, turn into a diamond. The third myth relates to the claim that the rate of volcanic eruptions is increasing, with a focus on this being the case largely within the last 100 years. However, the rate of volcanic eruptions has remained essentially constant on our planet since about 6,000 years ago, with 40 to 50 volcanoes generally actively erupting in some manner at any given moment. The reason why I believe this myth persists is twofold. First, across the last century, increasing fast means of transportation and interconnectivity of world countries has allowed for reporting on volcanic eruptions that otherwise may have gone completely unnoticed except for the people who could directly see the volcano. Then came the internet, and since the majority of the world population now has internet access, people can immediately post photos or videos of a volcano actively erupting, including in remote parts of the world that would have largely gone unnoticed a few decades ago. Satellites are also a factor, as we can now spot an eruption in a completely inhospitable remote location, such as Mount Michael or the Big Ben volcanoes in Antarctica. Thus, the number of volcanic eruptions is not increasing, as instead only the amount of information and number of reports we have on erupting volcanoes is increasing. The fourth myth relates to claims that the Yellowstone supervolcano is going to produce a major eruption sometime soon, as it has been 631,300 years since its last super eruption. However, this is not the case, and even with this length of time, the Yellowstone hotspot has gone as much as 1.58 million years in the past without a super eruption occurring, so 631,300 years is negligible. Also, for a volcano to be capable of erupting in the first place, its magma chamber needs to contain a minimum of 35-50% to 50 melt, aka the portion in a liquid state. Yet, at Yellowstone, the melt percentage in its magma chamber is 28% or less, meaning a volcanic eruption is simply not possible anytime soon in my opinion. Our final myth claims that the fossil known as amber originated from fossilized tree sap. This is not the case, as instead, amber is composed of a different fossilized and more viscous substance known as tree resin. 
While sap is produced at all trees, resin is only produced by trees and other plants in the Pinaceae family. This family largely includes evergreen trees. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. As a final note, I would like to thank my new YouTube member, P. Apollo, for supporting this channel.